Getting a diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis can be one of the most challenging times in anyone's life, as it is not a diagnosis that comes quick or easy. People can suffer for years before finally landing in the right doctor's office and getting the right diagnosis. Usually along the way, someone will have an HLA B27 test done. This blood test is often thought of in the same vein as the ANA or rheumatoid factor, as those are other blood tests we do when trying to figure out if someone has an autoimmune condition, but they couldn't be more different. So let's talk all things HLA B27, what it is, what it actually tells us, and how to use it. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Let's just start with what the heck is this thing? In rheumatology and the world of autoimmunity, you may be used to hearing about autoantibodies. These are antibodies our bodies produce that mistakenly attack our own tissues, wreak havoc, and cause disease. If you find yourself discussing the possibility of, say, lupus, you may have the ANA, or anti-nuclear antibody, tested as a first step towards making a diagnosis. We have tons of autoantibodies that we can test for depending on which autoimmune condition we're worried about. You may also know that autoantibody testing is imperfect and it's very rare for a positive or negative autoantibody test result to definitively make or break a diagnosis, but it's simply a data point we use when putting a diagnosis together. The HLA B27 is not an autoantibody, it's a gene. HLA stands for human leukocyte antigen and is a group of genes we have on our sixth chromosome. The HLA genes all encode for different proteins related to our immune system. This area of our genome isn't the only place where immune genes live, but it was one of the first identified. HLA B27 is a specific variant or mutation of the HLA B gene and is one of the many different variants that have been identified. In 1973, the HLA B27 variant was found to be associated with ankylosing spondylitis. Since the 1970s, we have learned a lot more about this gene and AS, but we still can't draw a straight line between what this gene does and why someone develops AS. Because this gene lives in the HLA part of our genome, an area known to encode many proteins associated with our immune system, it has been assumed that a mutated HLA-B gene could simply produce a mutated protein that then messes up our immune system. And although we know that mutated HLA-B genes can lead to changes in the shape of different immune cells that then impairs their function and ability to communicate with other immune cells, there's not been one unifying pathway that has emerged as the reason people develop AS. This has led to the HLA B27 gene firmly being associated with AS, but in no way proven to cause AS. We've also learned a lot about genetics since the 1970s and now understand that one gene does not translate to 100% risk for any particular disease, and that is certainly the case with the HLA B27. The vast majority, like 90% of those with ankylosing spondylitis will have the HLA B27 gene, but most people with the gene won't have AS. We now know that there are different subtypes of HLA-B27 genes and that different ethnic groups have different levels of association with AS based on the subtype. And some subtypes aren't associated with ankylosing spondylitis at all. And finally, we've learned that the genetic risk for developing ankylosing spondylitis is actually tied more closely to a slew of genes found outside the HLA area of our chromosomes, even further de-emphasizing the HLA-B27's importance. Despite all these limitations, it is still a test we will often perform when considering a diagnosis for AS, or really any spondyloarthritis, which I'll speak more to a little later in the video. It's simply a blood test and will usually detect the HLA B27 gene either directly or indirectly and is reported as a simple positive or negative result. Some tests check for the DNA itself and others detect the protein created by the gene, but both can confirm the presence of the HLA B27 type gene. Okay, so now that we've covered what it is and its limitations, how can we use this as we consider a diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis? 
Well, it should be clear by now that this test result or the presence of this gene does not make a diagnosis really of anything, but it does offer an important data point and can provide some guidance when determining if more digging or more testing is needed. So what do I mean by that? Well, ankylosing spondylitis is an autoimmune condition that is characterized by inflammation of the axial skeleton, or put another way, the spine becomes inflamed. As you may expect, one of the main symptoms when your spine is inflamed is back pain. Well, back pain is very common. In fact, it's the most common complaint in our primary care clinics and the vast, vast majority of back pain that people will experience is not ankylosing spondylitis. It is just good medicine to not assume someone's back pain is AS and treat conservatively with anti-inflammatory medications, rest, and physical therapy. But at the same time, we don't want to miss those who have ankylosing spondylitis. So how can we determine who needs a second look and more testing? Well, one of the ways is simply time. Run-of-the-mill back pain will usually resolve in about six weeks. So if there aren't any other worrisome symptoms and it really is just back pain that someone's dealing with, then we will typically want to wait at least six weeks to see if it can resolve on its own because most of the time it does. And what are those other worrisome symptoms I just mentioned? Well, AS can certainly have back pain, but will also have knee, shoulder, or hip pain and swelling. People can develop enthesitis or swelling and pain in the areas where our tendons attach to our bones. The classic example being where our Achilles tendon attaches to our heel. And of course, because AS is a systemic autoimmune inflammatory condition, the entire body is affected and people can have fatigue, fevers, or decreased appetite, all things that wouldn't happen with running the mill back pain. So let's say someone's pain has persisted or they have some other symptoms that don't seem to fit just regular back pain. How do you know you should look for AS? Well, the HLA B27 test can be very helpful. As we said, the vast majority of those with AS will have a positive HLA B27. So using it as a screening tool to decide if more testing like x-rays, MRIs, and more blood testing is necessary makes sense and is in fact one way that we use it. In cases where imaging like x-rays and MRIs have already been done and the findings are possibly related to ankylosing spondylitis, the HLA B27 test can help boost our confidence in what we see on those imaging results. I know, I know, you may be thinking, but doesn't the image say it all? Unfortunately, not all the time. Sometimes an x-ray or MRI will be so clear that it's a slam dunk. But more and more, we are realizing that the findings we see on these images can also be seen in people without AS. So like our blood testing, we have to put the results in context with the individual and the HLA B27 test can provide important context. During this whole discussion, I've been focused on ankylosing spondylitis, but the truth is that HLA B27 is associated with all conditions that fall under the spondyloarthritis umbrella. This includes AS, but also psoriatic arthritis, reactive arthritis, uveitis, and inflammatory bowel disease. Each disease has its own unique association with HLA-B27, and this must be taken into account when considering one of these diagnoses. To learn more about these conditions, I'll link to a video I did on AS where I discussed the connections to these other conditions. Okay, so let's end with some tangible conversation starters you can take back to your doctor in regards to the HLA-B27. Have you had it tested and now don't know what's next? Well, presumably your test was done because your doctor was concerned about AS or some other condition in that spondyloarthritis family. If your test was positive, even though it doesn't make a diagnosis, it can be a sign that more testing should be done. So good questions to ask would be, do you need an MRI? And keep in mind that if AS is the consideration, you want an MRI of your pelvis, not your lumbar spine. The joints we are most concerned about are our sacroiliac or SI joints, and those are in our pelvis. And a lumbar spine MRI will typically not go down far enough to catch them. Do you need other blood testing? We tend to get carried away with blood testing in rheumatology, and for good reason, because there is little in our world that is definitive. We often need to cast a wide net to make sure we aren't missing anything. So although someone will end up getting a lot of tests done, in this case, I would argue that the most important next steps would be the CRP and SED rate, two tests that look for inflammation in the body. And do you need a referral to a rheumatologist? Yes, yes, the, the answer is yes. Have you been having back pain and wonder if you need an HLA B27? Remember what we discussed. Back pain is super common and the vast majority of those with back pain will not need to have their HLA B27 checked. But 
If your back pain has persisted longer than six weeks, is worse in the morning, and you generally feel better when you are up and moving about, two key ways to distinguish if your back pain is what we call inflammatory, or if you have any other symptoms that don't make any sense, like rashes, joints that also feel inflamed, eye pain, or belly issues, then it may be time to have your HLA B27 checked. HLA-B27 testing in certain situations can point us in the right direction so we can get answers faster, something that is desperately needed in the world of ankylosing spondylitis and other spondyloarthropathies. But like most of my other testing in the rheumatology and autoimmune world, it is not definitive and has to be taken in context with your symptoms and all other test results. We obviously talked a lot today about AS, and if you want to learn more, check out this other video I did. I hope you found this helpful and provided some clarity on the HLA-B27 test and how we use it. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with anyone you think could benefit from this information, and we'll see you next time.